One of the biggest surprises for me of the spring season was Boruto. I wasn't planning on watching it at first since I had lost interest in Naruto with all the fillers and slow pacing of the war arc, so I had no interest in a sequel to a show I didn't finish. Granted, I have done that before, but in that case, the battles look cool, and yeah, that's beside the point. Though after a few weeks of War 2 airing, I ended up hearing some good things about it, and I was doing a collaboration video with the Crimson Assassin, so I wanted to watch more of a traditional shonen anime, and well, War 2 fit that. And after a couple episodes, I found that I really liked Boruto, and it was cool seeing how the world had changed over the years since Naruto, and I did like the more down-to-earth adventures and mysteries, which was just refreshing to see compared to them blowing up every mountain with a jutsu. And then there was definitely some nostalgia as well because I watched Naruto so much when I was in high school. I also liked the character of Boruto. Yes, he is a bit annoying at times, but he was still an idealist that wanted to do good. The strong parallels that made the characters of Naruto interesting are here as well, especially with three of the main characters at the end of the first arc and all the connections with them and their parents. And I think my favorite part of the show is the relationship between Naruto and Boruto, especially because of how the strain in the relationship is so much because of Naruto following his very noble dream. And while not every episode is super exciting, I'm still enjoying the more filler-ish episodes since they flesh out the side characters that normally can't be given the focus. So am I saying that Boruto is a great anime that everyone should go watch right now? Not really. And I could list off all the downsides like a critical reviewer would, but those downsides aren't important. Yes, Boruto and Naruto have flaws. Major ones even. And I won't blame anyone who doesn't like these shows because of these flaws. But for the fans of these shows, the flaws just don't really matter. Either the fans are able to look past them and instead just focus on the parts they do enjoy, or they just don't notice the flaws at all. And either of these reasons are fine and valid. There seems to be a certain mindset among some in the anime community that hold that there is an objective standard that a good anime must meet, and anything that would deviate from that standard is wrong. But such a mindset ignores that everyone is different, and everyone has different tastes in media. If someone manages the impossible task of breaking their taste into a simple mathematical formula, it would only apply to them. There are some shows that are pretty much universally held to be good or bad, but there are always exceptions to these. Most shows are in the middle between good and bad depending on who you talk to, and even the few that seem to be universally praised or hated, you'll find people who disagree with the majority here. And yes, most of the time I do generally agree with the community about if a show is good or bad, but again, always exceptions. It seems that everyone praises Aero Proxy as a great and unique series, but I just found it to be boring. Conversely, most of the anime community hates Myogia, or they see it as a comedy, but I end up finding it enjoyable as a serious story. And I'm not saying that all these people who are different from me are necessarily wrong, but the things that might make them think a show is great or bad are not universal standards. We all have our own biases that shape our taste, and these can come from a number of different things. This could be experiences that we have had when we were younger, or maybe our personalities, or just our worldviews, and all these things can cause us to prefer one thing to another. There are some that claim that analytical content should try to look past all these biases and understand how storytelling would be without those, but this really is an impossible task. Take comedy, for example. I find jokes about absent-minded people really funny because, well, I can be an absent-minded person myself. Like how when I was writing the script, I was really getting into it, got excited about it, and then looked down and realized that the store was nearly closed and I had to go get something that day. Yeah, that actually happened. On the other side of comedy, there are things that I just do not find funny. For example, jokes about religion because I'm a religious person myself. Not to say other people won't think they're good jokes, it's just not something I enjoy. A couple recent examples of where some certain jokes really hit me would be Angel Beats, where there are a couple lines in there about computers and programming, and because I'm a computer programmer, I just found these to be really funny. Or one case with Hyperdimensional Neptune, talking about a compiler in the opening, and that was just awesome, even though that's probably a reference that most people do not fully understand. Granted, I don't either. And people often say that comedy is subjective, but so is every genre, really. For example, some people find sports anime really thrilling, others just say it's impossible to care about because the stakes are so low. Or there are those who find slice of life shows calm and relaxing, while others just find them boring. And there are those who find shows with lots of twists to be really suspenseful and exciting, while others might just write them off a shock factor. And it's not like either one of these perspectives is necessarily right. And yeah, I could go on for pretty much every genre of anime here. And even if it wasn't impossible to separate the objective quality of a work from someone's own biases, I don't think this is something that should be done, or at least I don't think that's something I want to do with my content. 
Anime is a different type of medium from others, just in the types of ideals and storytelling that it tends to present. And I am biased to like this medium, so if you are into anime enough to watch this video, I'm guessing you are too. So if I try to evaluate any anime completely free from bias, I would be throwing away the mindset that makes me like anime to begin with. And yeah, I do not make any claims to be a great anime reviewer. I do not have the analytical ability to really get into shows like Digibro or Pedantic Romantic, and I don't have the same creative mindset to bring my videos to life like people like Gigak do. But there is one thing I can do better than them, and that is because it is something that only I can do, and that is to give my own perspective on anime. Because they give their perspectives, I give mine. And because of this, I can highlight the things that I find cool or interesting. Maybe this is an entire show that I think is overlooked and I want to talk about, or maybe it's just a certain aspect or a trend that I want to explore and get into. And because of this, I'm able to present videos that no one else can, at least not quite in the same way. So, when you come to my channel, you'll get thoughts about anime from a guy who likes shonen anime, epic stories, and absurd comedy. And if you don't share at least some of my tastes and biases, this channel probably isn't for you. And again, that's okay. I can think of one person I know who would prefer to watch anime about boring samurai drinking boring tea than watching anime about inspirational superheroes and seeing them save the world. So he's probably not one of my frequent viewers and again, that's fine. I'm not trying to please him or really anyone with my views. Though you could probably guess that from my most recent videos praising shows that did not get much critical acclaim. And well, I don't even try pleasing my viewers in all the videos I make since I'm making a video about Boruto despite it being last in my Twitter poll. But I make videos that I find interesting, and this is an idea I've had in the works for a while, so yeah, here it is. And don't worry, I have lots of thoughts about Angel Beats too, which I will try to figure out how to put into words at some point, hopefully before too long. Oh, and Neptune's a cool show too, kind of fun, but yeah, not much to say. So yeah, I guess this is a very roundabout way to say people should like what they like. This is only entertainment after all, and if you're being entertained by it, then well, that's a good thing. Don't worry about what others like or don't like because, well, you're not them. There are some shows that I like that hardly anyone else does, and that's fine. I like it, and I don't care what they think. And in the cases where I do like something that not many people do, I really do like talking about it to present where I'm coming from. Not because I think you'll necessarily agree with me, but because you can at least understand why I have the perspective I do, even though we come to different conclusions. And I do really think you should be open to different things, not just go by just what someone says. So expand your horizons. Give sports anime a try even if you don't like sports in real life. Try some older anime instead of just watching seasonal shows. Or just dip your toe into the weird parts of anime. You may find that as you watch more anime, your tastes will mature, or maybe they won't. You might find that you still like long-running shonen like Naruto and Bleach, and that's completely okay. I've completed over 200 anime, and I've found that there is a lot to like about all different genres, but I still have a soft spot in my heart for shows like Boruto. So embrace your favorites. Celebrate them whether you are in a fandom of many or just few. Maybe these shows are your favorites because you just relate to them, or they inspire you, or they just embody the values you hold to be true, or some other reason you may not be able to fully describe. And that's how I am with some of my favorites. I cannot fully put into words why I like them as much as I do, as would, and that's why I keep on coming back to, them to talk about them more. For example, one of my favorites is Oi Twain Tales of Yunarimasu. And yes, of course I had to bring that one up. I have been rewatching it lately with Mighty Pai, and I love it now as much as I did the first time through. Episode 8 has specifically stood out to me in a way that I'm not even sure the creators originally intended, but because it connected with me in such a way, that made it even more of a favorite. And, surprisingly enough, the episode fits this topic quite well. So, I will end this video by letting the second greatest philosopher of anime, Tail Red, sum up my points, just replace her talk about literature without of anime, and I think you'll find that it fits perfectly. <laughs> real literature crap. You're not the one who gets to decide that. It's up to the people who live on this planet. And we don't care what you think. As long as our literature is entertaining and enriching, it doesn't matter what form it takes.